G'day guys, it is Chris from Low Carb Life coming at you again from the Low Carb Life kitchen and today I have something extra special for you guys. This is a bit of a Christmas special. We've um, just finished off killing about five of our roosters, um, so we've got plenty of chicken meat and I want to do something awesome with it with some homegrown chilies, some habaneros, some mangoes and some of our very own rooster meat here. So what we're going to be doing is making a mango habanero um, chicken sausage all right so chicken sausages can tend to be a bit dry so I've got a few different methods in there to show you guys how to prevent it from being dry and we're gonna have an absolute cracker sausage at the end of it guys you're gonna absolutely love this before we get our hands dirty into our chicken and mince here we want to go and get you guys to go and click the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any others because I am doing a jalapeno popper uh, sausage as well very shortly so stay tuned for that one so let's get stuck into it and let it rip Alright guys, first things first, I am going to cut up our mangoes and dice them up into little chunks. I'm going to put them on a plate and then I'm going to put them in the freezer because when I'm mixing the mince and the chicken together, what I want is a nice um, sort of tough mango so it doesn't get all mushy and squishy um, when we're mixing that together. So with your mangoes, just how you normally cut them. So cut them down the sides, try and stick close to that seed as you can. We're just going to nick it down the bottom here and then up at the top as well just so we can cut this extra stuff out. In Australia, Christmas time, we have a lot of mangoes. So it's always a pretty good time of year and they are just so delicious. You can use them in so much stuff, so fermenting some chili sauces and that sort of stuff, if you are growing chilies, is always a winner. Um, but it's a pretty exciting time, absolutely delicious. And don't waste any of it. So all of this, guys, you can hook into that, scrape all that flesh off, eat the seeds. I'm trying to get as much as I can into the sausages, but look, you gotta save a bit for yourself as well. So I did buy an extra mango for me. Very good. Now an easy way to dice up the mango here is get a blunt sort of bread butter knife or something and just cut through. So that's gonna stop you cutting through the skin. Cut it into the chunks, sizes that you want. So we're gonna do a bit of a grid here. And then we're gonna go back the other way. Make sure you're pushing into that skin quite, quite hard. Yeah, simple. So if you were going to eat it, you could pop that out and you've got the mango on a little platter. But what we are going to do, I'm gonna put that back in and I'm just gonna scrape it with my spoon into here. So just try and keep it as close to the skin as you can. Pop, pop, pop. All right. And that I'm going to freeze. Once I've got it all on there, I'm gonna freeze that in the freezer. So it is nice and hard and won't mush up. Okay, that's going straight into the freezer. We'll leave that in there. We'll get stuck into our habaneros. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get our habaneros. We're gonna core them, just take the tops off and we're gonna DC those guys. We're gonna chop them up pretty finely. Um, not, not super fine, but yeah, you still want a nice chunk of habanero in your sausage, but you don't want the seeds because they're gonna be a bit too punchy for some people. So just halve them, we'll core them out and they'll go into the bowl. We're gonna prepare our chicken mince. Now, word of warning, I would generally wear gloves when you're de-seeding these because this stuff does really absorb into hand. So already now, after only doing that many chilies, that's done to burn my fingers that oil soaks in. And it can be very uncomfortable, especially if you go to the toilet after and you know, you're touching bits that are more sensitive than other areas of your body. It can go really badly and it really hurts for quite a while after. So I'd recommend doing that. Now that we've got these done, let's just chop these up. Pretty, pretty roughly, like it doesn't have to be super fine. Guys, I'm just gonna stack these on, rip through these guys, and they're gonna go straight into the bowl. All right, so you can see that it's not super fine, but it's enough that you're not gonna get a massive chunk of habanero for someone that doesn't like them. And I don't know why they'd be eating my sausages if they didn't like habaneros anyway, because I put it in most of them. <clears throat> okay, so that's in the bowl. Now guys, I do love chunky sausages. So if you go to the butchers and you get a sausage that's you know, they say there's all this stuff in there and it doesn't seem, you can't see the chunks. It's, it's not, not uh, getting me that impressed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of my own chicken thighs and then I've got a bit of chicken mince that I've bought um, here. So what we're gonna do is just chop this up relatively chunky um, <clears throat> to start with, right? So it might be worthwhile pulling a bit of the skin off to begin with, otherwise we're gonna have a bit of, a bit of um, skin chunks. And I can see I've left a couple of feathers or just, you know, those pin feathers in here when I was plucking, so I'll have to get onto that. You see a bit of the featheridge there. Anyway, I digress. Let's get these chopped up. 
All right, won't waste the skin. That, I'll just put that in my stock pile for chicken stock, which making it from your own chickens, pretty awesome stuff. All right, <clears throat> so these, again, not super finely chopped, right? So we're just gonna get them chopped up. These are still slightly frozen. I did put them in the freezer yesterday after I broke the chickens down. Um, so let's get them done. That is satisfactory. So it's it's not a super fine chop, right? You want some chunks in there because um, that's going to absorb all the flavour. It's going to give the sausage a bit more rustic sort of go there. Um, we just want to kind of know what we're doing. So now, guys, before you chuck that in, what we should do is weigh out the the chicken here. So we know this is 500 grams. <coughs> This is going to be critical for later on when we're putting the salt in to make sure we don't over or under salt it. So I'm going to pop this on and zero our scale. So we're looking for around about a 1.5 to 2% um, weight by salt. So pop that in there. So that is 320 grams. All right, and that's going to go in the bowl. So 320 grams of our chicken thigh. And then we know we've got 500 grams here of chicken mince which they reckon is naturally lean, so about 2% fat. So we've got to fix that up because the sausages will be dry otherwise. So figured out, we need about 13 grams of salt, um, which is about 1.6%. Um, so I'm gonna use some light salt today. So this is your normal sodium, and it also has a bit of potassium um, in there as well. So, just, so you're getting less salt, um, sodium, which is not so good for you. So we want 12 um, grams of salt, around about 12 to 13. Okay, so this I am going to dissolve in a tiny bit of water to put through there. It's going to help that keep a bit more moist. Um, so I'm going to get some more water into here. Also, we're going to put our sausage casings in a little bowl of water here as well, just to start rehydrating so it's easy to get onto the sausage machine over here shortly. Alrighty, give that a bit of a mix around in the bowl. Dissolve it as much as you can. When, with this much water, I haven't put much in. It might not fully dissolve, but it will once we've got it in the chicken. Okay, so we've got this mixing in. <clears throat> we're just gonna put that on top. Guys, next we are going to add our spices into the mix. So to make a good sausage, you're gonna need some good spices. So first I've got some ground coriander, which I'm just gonna sprinkle a bit in. Not too much, I'm just gonna use the rest of the packet. It's about a teaspoon that you can see there. Next in, we're gonna put some of our garlic. So I'm just gonna nick the bottoms off that, and we're gonna put that in. <clears throat> I haven't put too much garlic in, I do love garlic, but I do want the flavor of the habaneros and the mango to really shine through because it's it's a chicken sausage they're pretty delicate so four cloves for this one straight in there get the other guy in there we're going to put in some onion powder so guys these i have added that extra water these powders the bit of garlic and the onion and the coriander that i'm putting in um, they are going to absorb a bit of that water so this is how we're going to make sure it stays moist not too dry so it might seem like there's a lot of water I've also got some onion flakes chopped up in here. All right, a bit of that. <clears throat> These all just add to a nice flavor. We're gonna put some smoked paprika in, just a little bit. It's not spicy, but it really adds a beautiful, beautiful flavor to the sausage itself. Last thing, we need a bit of cracked pepper over the top, plenty of that. And that is smelling awesome already. Like, I'm really excited for that. Pretty beautiful. Then guys, all we really need to do is just get in, give it a really good mix around um, with your hands most likely. We're gonna mix, incorporate all that stuff first before we put our mango in. I've just got some light flavored um, olive oil. Just gonna give that a good slug. Sausages need a high percentage of fat. Um, otherwise they taste dry and they're not great. So you wanna make sure that there's enough fat in there. You could use something like pork fat or something mixed in there. Now these mangoes, they have stiffened up quite a bit since they've been in the freezer. So we're gonna pop them in and then I'm gonna gently Stir that around until it's nice even. So guys, if you have a look at that, that is roughly half and half mango and habanero and the rest of it is chicken. So that is how a good sausage is made. You want a lot of ingredients in there, all right? Then you're gonna 100% be like, what is this sausage? It is mango and habanero and it's delicious. Okay, so next step, we're gonna prepare the sausage maker. So to start off with, I have got my tube that's gonna fit in here. So guys, this part here is a silicon seal, which just basically makes sure it's, it's completely sealed the whole way around, so pressure can go straight through and pushes the mixture out. So I'm just gonna briefly grease this 
side up here, just so it makes it a bit easier to slide down once it starts there. So we're gonna get this um, yeah, shape, shape, sausage shaper part onto the machine. That just goes and twists in there. Then we're gonna get our casings that are nice and soaked in the water out. So find the end. This is a bit of a tricky affair, this one. So we're just gonna put that on there, freeze this a bit. All right, and away we go, nice. And slowly just pulling them on. This can be made a bit easier if you actually push a bit of air into the sausage to start with. So like this, all right, just popping it through. That does help, tend to help a bit when feeding it on. So that'll nearly do us, guys. I'm just gonna chop him off there. Now don't tie a knot in the end just yet. So, because we've sealed the top here, that's gonna create a bit of suction. So we're just gonna suck that back up and off. <clears throat> now we're gonna fill the um, sausage maker with our mixture. Nice big chunks of it and straight down the hatch, splat. Okay, so once we've done this, make sure you've got a nice clean surface um, with minimal chicken juice if you can, because <clears throat> these sausages are gonna come out, but I'm gonna try and put them onto, onto a little chopping board here. So we're gonna pop that underneath, and then we're gonna coil them up. Guys, what we're gonna do, we've got to get this on. We're gonna push down until you start seeing the mixture come through. Now what you'll notice here, it's gonna start coming through. Here we go. So that's just pushing a bit out. Let's get to the end now. Once we've got the air out, the most of the air out from the bottom, Let's tie this off, okay. So no tricky knots or anything, just tie it off. We don't want to start off with too much pressure because you can untie the knot quite easily because it's, it's so wet and slippery, right? So give yourself a bit of, bit of leeway there, all right? And now the trick is here, not to over pressurize the sausage bits. Okay, so each time you get around about a sausage length, just give it a bit of a pinch and then begin again because when you want to swirl them up later, a lot easier if you've already put a bit of a pinch in there. And just slowly work your way through here. And try and coil this up as we go. Which is hard when it's a one person show. So that is it. <clears throat> now guys, I've got a bit of air in here. I'm not a professional at this at all, but what you can easily do, it won't matter too much. You put a little pinprick with a knife or a fork or something in there, and then that air will come out. But it will help to have the space when I'm trying to twist these all up. There's a little bit of mixture left in here. I might fry that up and just see how it tastes and get going. All right guys, so these look and feel a little bit mushy now, but we're gonna pop them in the fridge anyhow, and that is gonna help set them a bit. So, cause it's all, you know, <clears throat> slightly cool, maybe around room temperature actually. They, the sausages um, have you know, become a bit more sort of flexible. Once he's twisted, okay, let's just redo a knot, cheeky knot there. Slide him down and that is that. I'm gonna pop these in the fridge to set a bit um, and then from there we're gonna basically cook some up and see how they taste. Alrighty team, once you've made your sausages and they've been resting for about four hours, grab yourself a wine, come out to your barbecue, and get your Frolington on because, boy, we are going to cook some sausages. I'm gonna have a quick clean here. I'm gonna give it aging spray. We'll get a bit of flame throwing going on here, but just give it a little bit so they don't stick so much, but there is a protective coating on their wood. Now, if you're having trouble with sausages popping, just put it on a low heat. I haven't even pricked these. Well, I have pricked some, actually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but put it on a low, medium heat, just cook them a bit slower, they're going to stay a lot juicier, you're not going to have the fat spewing out everywhere, and that's what you're after, a juicy sausage, who doesn't love one? Uh, but that's like, that's not a, we have to, like, I have to go here and say, yeah. Shook is about to have her first bite of the sausage, what do you think? Let it soak in, gather your thoughts. Really good. Good job. Deep, deep insights mm. from Tegan. Mm. Right. All right. Chunky? 
spicy, <gasps> sweet, mm. really flavorful. Oh, you don't love it. Love it. Love it. Well. Perfect. What What are your thoughts? Well, about I just, the sausage? I just tasted the jalapeno Ooh. sausage, and man, that was just delicious. Let me show you what's inside. Oh, Lord. Let me, let me oh, zoom on that. <laughs> it's, uh, so good. And then inside the mango one, mango and what is it? Mango, habanero and rooster from the yard. Mm, just beautiful. Compliments. My salad of avo and mango. Absolutely. Well. Now we have Graham here and he is about to tell us about his thoughts of the sausages. What did you reckon, mate? Really enjoyable. The ones with the most chilli were just the right amount of chilli for me. I quite enjoyed them. The mango sausages with the chicken, just a little too soft and mushy. Could do with a little less mango next time. Feedback taken well. What I would do, team, next time is probably dehydrate your mangoes for about two hours and then put them back in the sausage. Let a bit of that chicken juice suck back into that mango and you've got chicken flavoured mango. Who can complain about that? Nobody. <laughs> Except for the chicken. <laughs> with the mango, I reckon dehydrating that would be perfect. Um, otherwise, fantastic snacks. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I thought they were. Really good. I enjoyed the jalapeno popper one the best, even though I do love mango, and that was a firm second out of two out of two sausages. <laughs> um, they were both a little bit soft, but in saying that, it's one of Chris's first attempts, but flavor wise. Whoa! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> flaccid sausages are shameful. So, this is my review on the two sausages. We've got the jalapeno popper sausage with beef, and we've got the mango chicken. Now, with the mango chicken, it was a little bit flaccid, but in flavor, 10 out of 10. And in the habanero one, Again, 10 out of 10. They were both growers in flavour and they were showing in flavour. 10 out of 10 all around.